Hi there everyone and welcome to my first official tutorial video. So I did a couple of videos for the iTunes lip sync contest and I really enjoyed doing them. And then from one of the videos I actually got one of my few subscribers asking me exactly how I got one of my characters Emma to pour herself some coffee. So that's exactly what we're going to talk about today as we look at a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to import objects and animate them inside iCloud. Coolio, so let's start with step number one, which is to set up our scene. So to set up your scene, you essentially need to do three things. The first thing is you need to create your space or your scene. Then you're gonna drag and drop your character into the scene. And then most importantly, you need to add some motion onto your character. So you've got two options here. You can either keyframe your animation, or you could grab one of Reillusion, act to cause motions, and just drag and drop that onto your character. So in my particular case, I grabbed basically a female pouring some coffee and drag and drop that onto Emma. At this particular step, you want to try and get your end point and your beginning point of your animation as accurate as possible. For me, I focused on my end point because I knew I wanted Emma to be in a certain position to pour the coffee. So that's it for step number one. Moving on to step number two, which is to export the props that you need. So to make my scene work, I needed two props. One prop for Emma to pour the coffee from, and then of course a prop for her to drink the coffee from. So some form of pot or some form of cup. That's what I needed, so off to Daz I went. Daz actually has a cool set of props called Everyday Coffee, and you can basically find anything you need here for a cup of coffee or a cup of tea for that matter including trays and biscuits and even a cool looking cappuccino. But that's not what we're looking for, we're looking for a pot and a mug. Yep, here we go. This is the perfect one. Everyday coffee, coffee pot. So let's drag and drop that into our viewport. And now to check if there's any morphs, we're going to make sure we select our prop. So on the right hand side, click on the scene tab, select your prop. Then we can check for the morphs. Uh, the morphs in Daz appears under one of three of the tabs, either the posing tab, the shaping tab or the parameters tab depending on what the morph is in our particular case there was one morph and it's found under the shaping tab in fact it's one that adjusts the level of the liquid inside the coffee pot pretty cool so if I slide my slider to the right the level of the liquid drops and if I slide it back to the left my liquid level rises so we want to make sure we grab this particular morph on our way out as we convert it to an FBX but before we do that, there's something else I want to grab with the spot, and that is actually what they call the coffee pour. There we go, my liquid is now being poured out of the coffee pot. So, let's convert this to an FBX file. So to do that, we're going to click on File, we're going to Export, and then we want to make sure that we export as an FBX, not an OBJ, so we click on that. And once we've done that, um, and as you can see, I've already exported this particular object, so I'm just going to replace it. So I'll click on that. Export. Yes, replace. Which brings us up to probably the most important window for this particular tutorial, which is the export window inside Daz. So I'm not going to go through all of the tabs and the tick boxes. I'll take a screenshot and show that to you guys on the screen. You're welcome to take a screenshot of it yourself. But the most important one for our particular exercise is to make sure we click the Morphs tab. To check if the Morph is applied, you can actually look on the list and here you can see if I click this down, there's a Morph. It's my Level Morph, so that's the only Morph I need, so it is there. If by any chance you don't pick up the Morphs and you know there is a Morph for this particular prop, you can always click on the Edit Morph Export Rules. And if you punch in export anything there, or type in export anything there, you can bring up whatever morphs are available for this particular problem. But we're happy, we got our morph, and we just want to click accept. Cool, so our prop is exported. Now we've got to import it into iCloud. Now I still do it the traditional way through 3D Exchange because I've noticed that sometimes when I try to import a prop directly into iCloud, it often comes in without the morphs. So, 
I usually do it through 3D Exchange. Let's do that. So it's simply a matter of dragging and dropping a prop into 3D Exchange. Okay, so it looks like our pot lid is not in the right position, but not to worry, we'll fix that up inside iClone. So what I wanna do in 3D Exchange is make sure of three things. The first thing I wanna make sure is that each of my items of my prop are all separated. Now, if I export this particular prop as it is now, I'm gonna get the pot lid, the kettle, the pour, as well as the liquid, all as one particular item. And I don't want that. I wanna be able to control all of them separately. So I'm gonna to have to make them all into sub props. To do that, you select the item on the left-hand side, tab, and once you've selected it, you click on the right hand side. Near the top, you'll see a make sub prop. And you do the same for all of the items. That way, we ensured that each of these props can be animated separately. That's it for 3D Exchange. Apply it to iClone. And boom, it appears inside iClone. Alright, so here we are inside iClone. So before I do the morphs, there are two things I want to do quickly. I want to make sure that all of my items or all of my sub props are in fact sub props. And then I'll do a quick rename. And then of course we want to fix the pot lid and get that into the right position. So to be able to accurately place my pot lid, I need to just make sure I edit the pivot point. Uh, and you can do that on the attributes tab. If you scroll down to pivot, uh, in my particular case, I want the pivot point to be at the bottom in the center of the pot lid. So click middle, that's the correct tab. And there we go. So now we can move and adjust and transform our pot lid to where we want it. So that took a little bit longer than anticipated, but finally I'm happy with the position of my pot lid. Now we're going to move on to the next step, which is step number four, creating the morphs. If you exported your object or your prop with the morphs correctly, then this particular step should be a breeze. All you're going to do is select your prop and then jump on over to the motion or animation tab and you'll find two little buttons there the one that says morph creator and one says morph animator we want to create a morph so we're going to click on the morph creator tab so we click on that and the morph creator window will open it does take a bit of time not sure why but yeah give it some time and it will do the job for you there we go and the cool thing with iClone is if the morph has been imported correctly, it will pick it up and it will actually ask you, do you want to do a auto conversion for the morph list? And of course the answer is yes, that's the whole point of this exercise. So once we click on yes, it will bring in the prop together with the morph. Hey, there's our morph. How cool is that? Uh, if I slide to the right, my water drops. If I slide to the left, my water rises. Yeah, at this stage it looks more like water than coffee to me, but we'll sort that out in the next step as we look at the materials. For now, I'm just going to rename the morph to something that I think will read a bit better. And then we're going to update our morph in iClone. So we click on the tab on the right. Once the morph has been updated inside iClone, we want to make sure that it works. So let's do a quick check. Works perfectly, which now leads us on to step number five, which is to apply the PBR materials. So I'm not sure if you figured this out yet, but I'm not a big fan of unnecessary manual labor. And therefore, I highly recommend the Substance PBR 200 Plus Material Applicator. Material Adder. Material Bringer. Uh, I'm not sure what you call it, but it works wonderfully. You literally drag the material and drop it onto your prop. And in our particular case, I'm going to grab the aluminium clean PBR substance material and drag and drop that onto my coffee pot. And drag and drop that onto my coffee pot lid. There we go. Materials applied. Now we're going to move on to the water. So to change my water to coffee, I'm going to have to mess around with the actual materials. So I click over to my material tab. Scroll down to the liquid, there we go. And here I'm gonna have to mess around with the opacity a bit and then just darken the diffuse color to look more like coffee. 
mess around with the slider for self-illumination because liquids generally have some form of self-illumination. And then I think the thing that will sell the liquid would be the reflection. So tick the box and make sure that my slide is all the way up. There we go. I'm happy with my prop. My coffee pot is basically done. Let's just do one last check on our morph, which I'm quite excited about. Liquid up, liquid down. Pretty cool. Now we can save our prop. Now we move on to our second prop, which is the cup. The process is exactly the same. Uh, the only difference here is if you go to the shaping morphs, you will see that there are three morphs on the cup as opposed to one for the coffee pot. And the three morphs are the level of the liquid, tilt forward and tilt side. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that all three of those morphs are included when we export this particular prop. A quick drag and drop into 3D Exchange. Not necessary to make sub-props here, because it's all one prop, but we want to make sure all three are morphs are there. Open the Morph Creator. Let's quickly add some PBR materials onto our cup. Before I save it, I just want to make sure that my reflections are working correctly. Love it! Now let's change the colour of the cup and save our new prop. The props are saved, which takes us on to the next step, which is step number 6, which is linking the props to the character. To get your character to pick up or interact with the prop, you need to link the prop to the character's body part. In our particular case, we need to link the coffee pot and the mug to Emma's hand. But before we can do that, we first need to position and scale the prop to where we need it. So let's start with doing that for our coffee pot. So linking an object to a character is pretty easy. All you're going to do is find the right time in the timeline, uh, select your prop, and then under the Attributes tab, scroll down to Linkage, and pick Parent. And in our particular case, we're going to be picking Emma's hand. And there you go. The object is now linked to the character's hand. And to unlink is even easier. Again, you scrub down to the place in the timeline where you want to unlink and you just click on the unlink button. Now we do the same for the cup, which is exactly the same process. Let's position the cup and link the cup to Emma's hand. To add your prepared morphs onto your prop is pretty simple. All you gotta do is select your prop, make sure your timeline is open, and then head over to the Motion or Animation tab, click on Morph Animator. The Morph Animator window will open, and then you scrub on the timeline to the places where you want to add the morphs. In our particular case, we wanna make sure that the cup is empty before Emma gets there, so I'll go over to my liquid level, drop that down in the beginning on my timeline, and then scrub through my timeline to when Emma starts pouring. Then I'll make a copy of my, uh, my level at 100. Again, it needs to be empty. And basically as she's filling up the cup, the morph slider will be moved over. To animate the coffee that's pouring out of the coffee pot is very similar, but instead of manipulating the morphs in the timeline, we're going to be manipulating the materials in the timeline. So first thing first, click on your prop, the coffee pot in our case, then open up the timeline and next to the prop name, click on the down arrow. Amongst many of the tick boxes, there will be a material tick box, open that up. And in your timeline, you'll see the various materials. Now, all you gotta do is in the timeline, decide when you want the coffee uh, pour to be visible or when you want it to be invisible. And you simply use the opacity slider to make it disappear or to make it appear in the timeline. 
Once you've done the linking of the props, and you've done the morphs, and you're pretty happy with the animation, then we move on to step number 7, which is keyframing the details. So this is the tedious process of using your edit motion layer to animate your character, making sure that none of the fingers go through the cup, making sure that the hand doesn't go through the coffee pot, and yeah, so this is the longest part of the process, but good things usually take time. So sometimes to sell an animation, you may require some special effects. Which leads us to step number 8 and our final step for this particular tutorial. Adding the effects. So in my particular case, I wanted to sell the fact that the coffee inside the coffee pot was hot. So I needed some form of steam effect. And I found the perfect particle inside the Popcorn Effects Library 40 inside the Weapons and Explosive tab called Smoke. So I grabbed my particle and dragged and dropped it into my scene. And then I ran a quick simulation. And as you can see from the simulation, this particular uh, smoke is way too much for my small little cup. So all I needed to do was to change the global scale. Next, I placed the particle in the desired position, which in my particular case was just on the top of the cup. And then finally, I needed to add the effect in the timeline when I needed it. So, open your timeline, find the position where you want to start the effect and end the effect. And similar to doing the morphing, you literally scrub down the timeline and you choose when you want to emit this particular effect or not, or this particular particle or not. So this is where I want to start admitting, emitting it, when you pause. And of course you can end the emission wherever you want to. Once I was happy with the effect, I then attached this particular effect to my cup so that it would move along with my cup whenever I picked it up. There we go, I think we are ready for render. Let's have one final look at our animation and our effects. That's it for this particular tutorial. I hope you guys found it helpful. To the subscriber who requested it, I hope that it was helpful. If you found me speaking too fast at certain sections, because I do have a habit of doing that, I'd be happy to answer any questions in the comments below. Cheers everyone, bye bye!